All right, hello everyone, it's Silver Kyle, and today we're gonna to be going over all the books that I'm currently reading at the moment because I have a bit of a problem. I'm currently reading five books at the same time, and this is something that I normally never do. I'm usually reading two books at once, sometimes just the one, uh, but more often than not, I'm reading two different novels. One of them will be like something heavy in fantasy, and then another will be like some kind of mystery thriller. I find that it's a nice balance because sometimes the he heavy fantasy is just a little bit too much. So I can just hop into the thriller, which is a much shorter book and a lot easier to dive into. And that usually is the kind of vibe that I'm going for. But right now, because everything has been so busy, I have five books on the go and I kind of have to pinpoint and focus what I'm going to be reading in the next little while to hopefully bring this down so I can start new books afterwards. So let's kind of go into the chronological order of how I started these and how I ended up with five books at once. So months ago, before I started looking for a house, or I, I guess when, right now, when I was starting to look for a house, I wasn't as busy. And I had started at that time, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. This has been the bane of my existence in the sense that I have been trying to finish the, this book ever since the beginning of high school, and it just seems to escape me all the time. I'm only a few chapters in, like you can see where I'm at here. This is the beginning of the book on this side, so I'm only a few chapters in, and I'm liking it, uh, but it's such a heavy, dense book. I really love Tolkien's writing now that I can appreciate it, but it's um, very dense and it's, I need to read something else at the same time. So what happened was I went against my own rule and started reading two fantasy novels at once because this had just come out. And this is The Trials of the Empire by Richard Swan. This is the third book in The Empire of the Wolf. So the, the, it's finishing up the trilogy. I enjoyed the first two books. I read them last year. And I wanted to kind of finish this up. So I was like, oh, it just came out. Let's read that. And I, once again, just a few chapters in. And that's kind of where I stopped. And I started reading other books. Um, was enjoying where this was going. They actually had a pretty good intro. I would probably say that I enjoyed the first book more uh, than the sequel. Uh, the first book to me was kind of just being introduced to that world. And we had a little bit of like a mystery as well at the same time in a fantasy novel, which I thought was really cool. But, uh, and then the sequel kind of happens and it just goes more into politics and more about what's good, what's coming up next. And still a lot of cool ideas and concepts, but not as cool as the first one. Uh, whereas this one, there's a little bit more of uh, before we get into this big war that's potentially going to be happening, I assume it's going to be happening. They're kind of preparing for stuff and they're going into some really neat things that I can't get into because it'll spoil things. But yeah, very much enjoying the Trials of the Empire at this point in time. I just decided to start another book at that point. And that was because one of my friends, um, we were trying to all kind of read books at the same time, and he had started, um, on my recommendation, The Tainted Cup. Once again, another fantasy novel dealing with a mystery to a degree. And uh, this one is based on two characters here. We have the main character who is an apprentice of this really reclusive um, detective, I guess, or investigator in a fantasy setting that really doesn't get along with people. And she stays in her home the entire time. And what happens is that he gives, writes down such excellent notes and kind of knows what she's looking for that he's the one that actually goes to investigate whatever the scene is and tries to get as much information as he can to come back and give uh, the recounting of what he saw there. And then she's, because she's such a brilliant person and detective, but socially awkward and doesn't want to leave her house, she's able to then figure out everything from her home. That's kind of the gist of it. I mean, it's just, a, once again, just the very beginning, but my friend finished this book and that's where I started getting a little bit too busy and I was reading three fantasy novels. So I said, I need a little, <laughs> so bad. I said, I'm kind of in the mood for a thriller. Once again, this is very not like me to just be starting a ton of books all at the same time. I normally stick to one or two books. That's it, sometimes three. Once in a while, if I feel like the two books that I'm reading, maybe maybe I'm reading a heavy fantasy novel and the thriller that I picked isn't really connecting with me and it's kind of just like, ugh, like, yeah, it's an easy read, but I'm, it's not interesting and it's not catching my attention. So then I'll bring in a third book into rotation to kind of keep me going 
and then I'll be able to finish the other two. It's really weird, but it's, it's a system that works. I'll have to explain that one of these days, how you kind of just add more books. This time around, I didn't do that on purpose. It's just, I was so busy and I said, okay, I'm in the mood for this, I'm in the mood for that. Yada, yada, yada. So not long ago, just before I, I ended up getting my house, I started uh, Lucy Foley's The Midnight Feast. Now I had read, I think it's The Guest List by Lucy Foley or The Guest, something like that. I think it's The Guest List. Um, if I could find a list of all her books, The Guest List, okay. So that's the novel that I read from her before. And I, I, I did quite enjoy it. And this one is okay. Uh, it's basically, there's a few characters that kind of know each other from when they were younger. And the main character ha is this really popular and uh, rich um, person who decided to come back and buy this resort uh, on this land that was kind of, everybody in town kind of shared this land and, and would go in there, it was just like the woods. And there was like trails and all that kind of stuff. And she decided to buy a resort here and or to buy, buy the land and turn it into a resort for rich people uh, as like an escape. And there's another character that kind of shows up that wants to talk to her, I guess, about something that happened 20 years ago during a midnight feast or something like that. That's the, that's the gist of what I'm getting there. And I'm, I'm a little more than halfway, at least in this one, because once again, thriller novels are much shorter and a lot faster to kind of get through as opposed to a fantasy novel. Not that I can't read fantasy novels fast. If, I, if it's really good and it's just, I can't put it down, I'll continue reading it. Um, it, it just, my I, I, I guess I have like an attention, a certain amount of attention and I'm trying to get better with that, but it's, it, it's hard to kind of get your hold back onto things and switch flip-flopping between books seems to do the trick. So anyway, uh, this one's not bad. I'm enjoying it. Not as much as I think I did like the guest list, but it's still enjoyable so far. And then when I ended up going out west to visit my brother and his wife and uh, my niece for the first time, I brought this book and I think um, the Tainted Cup as well it, with me in the airport, but I left it in my suitcase that was not with me. And I was like, damn it. So now I'm in just waiting for my flight and I'm like, okay, I see a bookstore. I'm like, well, let's just go look to see if there's anything for 2024 that seems interesting. And then I saw Linwood Barclays, uh, I Will Ruin You. Essentially, I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but I do that often enough. And I said, okay, that's a thriller novel. Good enough for me. I, I read the inside of the flap. I did do that as well. And I had seen Linwood Barclays uh, name before. Funnily enough, I was going through my books as I'm like uh, unpacking everything and, and putting up everything in my library for hardcovers. And I have a book from Linwood Barclay. I haven't read it yet, but I do have it. And I think it was one of the books that just, every so once in a while, um, some uh, members of my family, my aunt and my uncle, my, my two aunts and one of my uncles are really big readers. And every so once in a while, they'll get like a ton of books. And I kind of look through them and if there's anything that interesting that catches my eye, I'll pick it up because they're like, okay, we're they kind of have like an ongoing thing where they grab like 30 books that like they hear from other people that just don't want these books anymore. And then it kind of gets shuffled through and they kind of add, take and add to the pile. And I get it at the end kind of thing, kind of shuffle through to see if I like anything. So that's one of the books I decided to, to pick out. And anyway, started this one. And I mean, I only read it on the flight and I'm almost halfway through and I really like this. Out of everything that I'm reading, I'm, I'm probably most, well, Lord of the Rings is pretty up there too. But in terms of, of just wanting to finish this, I'm so into this story. It's about this character called Richard. And it's funny because my mother was sitting beside me and the book, the chapters are either going to be about Richard or another character or just any other character. And it won't say the other characters will just be blank. So it's either Richard or it'll say nothing. So she kind of saw me starting this and she's like, so how's Richard doing? And Richard is a nice guy that is just going through the worst phase of his life. He is essentially, he's a high school teacher and goes through a phase where he becomes a hero just by chance. And his wife is upset at him because of this, because he's a, he's a hero, because he put himself at risk. And then people see him on TV and now they're trying to blackmail him for stuff. 
for what seems like he probably didn't do and he has no idea what to do and then there's another teacher that's upset with him. There's so many things that's kind of just steamroll and this guy is just a nice guy from the mo from what I've seen anyway. And his life just gets harder and harder and harder as he's trying to do the right thing. And it's really interesting. And every time I, my mother would ask, oh, how, so how's Richard doing? I'd be like, oh, it's worse. And I would just tell her what's going on because she's most likely not gonna read this. Every once in a while I can convince my mother to read a book, but I have to really give like the biggest praise. She wants five star books only pretty much. So I, I have to kind of reserve those for really, really good books. And I, not to say that this is my, I don't think this is gonna be a five star book. It, it, it's, it's enjoyable, definitely. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. It might be a four star and considering how picky I am with my ratings, that's really high up there. That's really high praise to get four out of five stars. If that's what this ends up being, it's gonna be one of the best books I read this year by far. So yeah, really enjoying this one. And that's kind of where I'm at now. Those are the five books that I'm reading. Three fantasy novels, two thrillers. I have no idea what the order is going to be. I think that I will be finishing up this probably relatively soon. And then I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I can kind of jump on to the Tainted Cup, kind of finish that because my friend has finished it. And then I don't know the order of everything else. I feel like Lord of the Rings pro might be my last one that I finish out of this group. And I do feel, because this is a thriller, Midnight Feast will be finished also relatively soon. Uh, but that's kind of uh, the plan at the moment. And what I'll be doing is at the end of, or the very beginning of September, I'll kind of give you my TBR for September. So we'll kind of see how many of these books are going to be on there and how many I will finish. I'm hoping to finish at least one. That's probably all that's going to happen, but I might be a little bit further in the other ones because there's at least two books that I wanna add for uh, my reading in September. Whether I get to them or not, I have no idea. I can probably, I usually only read about two to four books per month uh, when I'm not busy. So we'll see, but last thing that I'm gonna add is that I will be doing a hopefully reading challenge reading challenges on one of the weekends where I just say that's literally all I'm doing is I'm trying to read as much as I can from Friday after work, Saturday and Sunday. So I'll tell you all that when we get a little bit closer to that, but I, I think it could be fun. So let me know in the comments below if that's something that you are interested in and uh, maybe we could all kind of try to read at the same time for a reading challenge just for the fun of it in September. Thank you all for watching. You have been bearded in. Beardage.